Young Peter Sauber had not shown any particular interest in cars and none at all in driving them around a the track. He qualified as an electrician with the aim of following in his father's footsteps. However, things were to turn out rather differently. Back in 1967, he used to travel to work in a VW Beetle. That was until a friend talked him into having some tuning work done on the car. Later that year, Peter Sauber entered the Beetle in a handful of club races for a bit of fun. Far more importantly, however, the experience sparked his interest in tinkering with cars. In 1970, he set himself up as an independent maker of open two-seater racing sports cars. He designed and built the Sauber C1 in the basement of his parents' house. The same year, Peter Sauber won the Swiss Sports Car Championship with the C1. In 1974, he retired from the cockpit to focus all his attention on building cars rather than driving them. Sauber came to international prominence when the C5 drove to victory in the then prestigious Interserie Championship in 1976. This was followed by his first attempts at Le Mans, by which time Sauber Motorsport had four employees on the payroll. In 1981, Hans-Joachim Stuck and Nelson Piquet drove a Sauber-built Group 5 BMW M1 to victory in the 1,000km race at the Nuremberg Ring. A Sauber C8 drove to victory in the 1,000km race at the Nuremberg Ring in 1986. More triumphs followed, eventually persuading Mercedes to return to international motorsport. From 1988, Sauber acted as Mercedes' official works team. The partnership reached its zenith in 1989, a 1-2 in the legendary Le Mans 24-hour race backed up by the drivers' and manufacturers' titles in the World Sports Car Championship. A year later, the team repeated its success in the World Sports Car Championship. Sauber Motorsport had now expanded to some 50 employees. This period also saw the establishment of the junior team. Michael Schumacher, Heinz Harald Frensen and Carl Van Ligger were selected for the team. Peter Sauber helped all three to take the step up into Formula 1. With the luster of the World Sports Car Championship beginning to fade, Mercedes set its sights on Formula 1 and in the summer of 1991, F1 was declared a joint project. Preparations had full swing and Sauber built a new factory at its premises in Hinville. In January 1992, Sauber decided to take the plunge and entered Formula 1 and in autumn of that year, the C12 completed its first testing session. By that time, the company was employing just under 70 people. The two World Championship points earned at the South African Grand Prix in 1993 ensured the team's debut was a widely acclaimed success. It was in 2001 when two milestones in the team's history arrived in quick succession. A fourth place finish in the F1 Constructors World Championship in mid-October, and just a few days later, the groundbreaking ceremony for the team's own wind tunnel. 2007, the second year under ownership of German car manufacturer BMW, was the next high point in Sauber's history, finishing second in the Formula One Constructors Championship. In 2008, the team set itself the goal of recording their maiden victory. That first win duly arrived in the form of the 1-2 finish in Canada. The team finished the season in third place in the World Championship. 2010 marked the 40th anniversary of Sauber Motorsport. Today, a team of 300 dedicated employees and the Sauber F1 team is now looking back at 20 years in Formula 1, the pinnacle of motorsport. Upon request from many of our fans, especially on YouTube, we decided to provide you with an extended and spiced up version of our Evolution of Race Cars video. This video not only includes the C1, C9 and C11, among other additional cars, it also provides more information and details like engines and drivers. Enjoy! Side view of our race cars including engine information.
front view of our race cars, including information on the drivers and other tidbits.
front view of our race cars. Stay tuned for some F1 statistics since 1993. Subscribe to our channel if you like this video.